What's up y'all, I'm Muren and I'm of Men. In this series I'll tell you all I know about modding the famous anime game so you can hopefully make your own mod soon. If you haven't already, make sure to watch episode 0 and 1 where I explain some stuff that we will use later in this episode. So without further ado, let's get right into it. In episode 1 I taught you about modding a weapon, but of course we also want to mod characters. However, the characters are not always as easy as weapons and I'll show you why in this video. So first, just import your character into Blender, put over the textures like I showed in the other videos. One thing I need to note is that characters don't just have one object, like weapons. They have usually two and sometimes even up to four, usually called body, head and possibly dress and extra. So when you add the textures to your Blender, you only have to save the body and head diffuse because the dress and the extra textures are always identical. So like I explained in the previous video, just add, import your character, put your textures on, and then we can start the modding. So the first thing what you want to check uh, when modding characters is loose vertices. If we select one of these objects and go over to edit mode, then you will see that it has a lot of vertices on the head, even though there is no actual faces or edges connecting them. An easy way to fix this is basically just going to mesh, clean up, delete loose, and it will delete all the vertices that don't do anything. This doesn't change anything about the model itself because it will only delete uh, vertices that aren't connected to anything. So the actual model itself stays the same. We can just do that for the head as well. And if you have more objects, of course, those as well. So delete loose and your objects will be a little bit uh, cleaner. So um, today what I kind of want to do is do a simple edit of Bennett and I want to remove the little orange thing bandana that he has around his arm. So usually when you start modding characters, um, there's a few things to watch out for. Usually like with weapons, everything is a loose group of faces. So you cannot just like, they're not always connected to each other. If you would want to sculpt a character, you will have to merge all the vertices by distance. However, it's more useful for us to uh, keep them loose right now because if I want to select something, um, it's easier to just press L while it's still disconnected instead of having to manually select each individual vertice. So the reason you usually want to merge vertices when you start to sculpt is because some sculpting tools will have uh, an effect on the vertices that might make them move in different ways even if they are in an identical position so let's say here you can see that there's two vertices on the same position but they don't always keep the same position so if I would go into sculpting and for example use the smooth the smoothen tool somewhere then you see that the vertices will disconnect after a bit if you seriously want to sculpt uh, which I will not be doing in this video you will need to uh, merge your vertices by distance, like I explained in the previous video. So let's get into the mesh editing. Um, I just want to delete this uh, bandana. So I'll just select all the parts that are on that specific object. Let's zoom in a bit. There's some more here, just using the link select tool. And I'll delete all of them. Oh, there's a little bit left. However, as you can see, uh, the vertices underneath this bandana are gone. They weren't there in the first place because Genshin models are optimized so that when something of like the body itself is covered by another object, then the part covered will uh, be removed so that there won't be as many vertices and thus a smaller file size in the actual game. We want to fill the gap that is missing on the right side and we can do that by copying stuff over from the left side. However, the faces aren't always the same shape and direction as the faces here. Um, with a bit of uh, tinkering, you can probably find out, like in my case, that these, like th this ring of edges around this arm is identical to this ring of edges. And the same goes for the one right above his shoulder. So that means that we will want to remove the upper lines around here that aren't matching with any vertices on the other side. And the same goes for the upper side and then select everything that is not here anymore on the other side and mirror it over. So let's first select 
this ring of vertices that I want to be gone just like that Oop. and do the same on the other side one thing to note is um, you want the topology to basically be perfectly mirrored which means that removing these two will mismatch it because then you will get a hole so only remove the vertices that you're absolutely absolutely sure of that should be removed and of course there are some double vertices left that we also need to get get rid of so if i'm correct they are very much the same on both sides right now and uh now oh i made a mistake this vertex shouldn't be deleted this neither and if we delete those, then they should be matching on both sides. So what we can do now is we can go into face mode and we can select all the faces that are missing here, basically. So that is this ring. Oh, wrong selection from there. And it's basically just matching a bit with the other side, like looking what misses on one side and trying to copy it on the other. And once you have selected, oh, once you have selected all faces that you want to be mirrored, which I think I got now, we cannot just like instantly mirror it. So what we'll do is we'll press P selection and that basically separates this part of the arm into a separate object. What we can do now is in object mode, we can use a modifier to get this part of the arm to go to the other side. I've talked about modifiers before, but not in great detail. So let's just select the proper object down here. Just make sure it's like light orange, not dark orange and go to the little wrench in the tool list here. It's called, it's the, it's the little icon that corresponds to the modifier page. So if you press add modifier, then you get a giant list with all kinds of difficult names, fancy icons that aren't for now very relevant, except for the mirror one. Using the mirror one, as you can see, we literally copy over this one in a mirrored state to the other side of the uh, base axis. We can mirror it across different axes by pressing I, Y, it will mirror around the, this axis. However, you won't see it because it's the same and around C. And as you can see, it will mirror around itself. We can also mirror around the specific object by spe selecting a specific object in the list. However, of course, we don't have that many right now. So once we selected the mirror modifier and as far as I can see, it will match quite well there's a little gap here we'll we'll fix that later so when we apply the modifier it isn't there yet in the actual model as you can see there is no vertices here because it's just the visual stuff that gets copied over to actually have the vertices itself we have to apply the modifier by pressing on the little arrow and pressing apply now it's actually like added to the model instead of just being shown and we can work with them so now that we have mirrored the arms, uh, we need to join it back into the body, of course, because we cannot work with it both. We cannot work with two different meshes. So the way to do that is first select the object that you want to join into another mesh, and then with shift uh, press down, select the object that you want to merge into. And you will see that is uh, Bennett's body in this case turns bright orange, and the arms turn dark orange. If you now press Control and J then you will see that it turns into one mesh again. And we have some lines here that we want to fix and we'll do that in a second. Back into the modeling tab, we will merge back the arms into the rest of the body because of course there's now duplicate vertices. The easiest way to do that would be merge by distance, but um, I don't want to merge the entire body by distance. So I'll just select the parts that are relevant in this case and I can press mesh clean up merge by distance 
And as you can see, the little ridges in there are fixed. However, the ridge here is not. And that is because the arms apparently aren't fully um, symmetrical. But an easy way to get these vertices to merge as well is slightly increasing the merge distance. Don't do too much because as you can see up here, it also merges the vertices that don't want to merge. So the easiest way to nuance that a bit is by manually typing some values until you have a value that works for you. Um, you could also manually merge them if you have a lot of vertices that are close to each other. Uh, the way to do that is uh, first I'll merge everything by distance on the lowest increment. Uh, one higher, like that. And you can then manually merge vertices by in vertex mode, selecting one vertex and selecting the other, and then pressing M and you get a few choices. So you could either merge at the center, so right between them, at the cursor, so where your 3D cursor is right now, at first or at last, basically um, what the position will be of the new merge vertices. In this case, I selected the arm vertices last, but I want the shoulder vertices to be the new position. So I will merge by first. And the other way around, merge at last, will merge it at the white selected vertices. If you don't want, uh, if you want to be sure you don't accidentally merge the uh, vertices that you don't want to be mer merge, you can just um, do it manually. Of course, it is a bit more time consuming, but it is not that much of a trouble. So once all vertices on the arm are merged, almost all except for that one. Once all vertices on the arms are merged, we are pretty much done with the model. However, as you might have noticed, there might be a few weird dents in your model right now. This is because the normals, basically the direction of the faces, might be a bit different on one side than the other. To fix that, we can just, in modeling, select both arms. And looks like all the vertices are merged properly. And we can go into face mode and press F3, type in normals. And there should be a button with smooth vectors. If you press this one, basically it will smoothen out all the faces in that area. And you can select a different vector to make them more or less smooth. I'll just use one so that the arms are fully smooth. And the 3D part of the model is now fully done. However, there is a few issues with the texture because of course the texture on the two arms are different for Bennett. And that means that the UV map is different. But because we copied this arm over, we also copied the UV map over. So what we can do is just go into UV editing, select only this arm, and we can make it so that the UV map only shows what we want it to show. So an easy way to check if everything is actually fixed is in your edit uh, mode, go to the top right and also change it to texture. Then you can immediately see on the model itself if all the uh, issues are fixed. So this little spike is probably the issue from these vertices overlapping the scar that should be only on this other shoulder. So I'll just slightly move these vertices down so that they only show the normal color of the arm. And as you can see, the spike on the model is actually gone. So besides that, there's this little ridge as well. And seems to be coming from up here. If you don't really know where an issue is coming from, you can just go into face mode and then select a few faces around the problem and they will be highlighted on the UV map for you to edit properly. So once we fix the UV map, you might think that it's fully done. However, a very important thing that differs characters from weapons so much is the animations. Most of the weapons don't have any animations, but characters of course have a lot of them. To make animations work, however, you can't just magically bend the character and you will need something to tell the model when to move what. Basically, to make animations work, characters have armatures. This is basically a set of individual bones imitating real bones. Every character in Genshin or pretty much every 2D model has its own specific armature. In the description, I'll provide a link to a repository where you can find most character armatures, especially of older characters. 
Um, it's all blend files. So once you have downloaded the blend file, you can just open it and you'll see these weird uh, cone shapes. We can just click on it and it will highlight the entire thing and press Ctrl C to copy it. And then in our own project, we can paste it. However, just having it there doesn't do anything yet. For this, we'll first select the body and then again, go into modifiers and we can add an armature modifier. It's all the way in the top in the deform column. Adding the armature modifier, we can select object and an armature object. And now basically the body is linked to the armature. In this case, you don't want to apply the armature modifier because if you do, then the body won't change anymore. It will stay in its state. So if you keep the modifier there, then you will visually see changes, but you won't edit the actual model. We can now go into pose mode, basically editing the armature by selecting it in the list and going in pose mode in the top right, top left, sorry. If I now toggle x-ray mode, you can see that pretty much everything that moves has a bone to it. Those bones are made up of three pieces, basically the cone and the two little balls. An individual bone has the little dots to represent where it starts and where it ends. And the cone shape is basically showing how big or small the bone is. All those bones have their own names. If we unfold the armature in the object list, we can see a lot of like little bone icons with numbers next to them. Selecting them will show you what bone is what number. These numbers are important, so remember them. And as you can see, uh, for example here, 11 is the thigh bone of his left leg. So what we can do is we can use rotate to actually rotate the bone around its axis. And as you can see, when I rotate the, the thigh, then the entire leg moves. That is not just because the entire leg is linked to this bone, but because the bones under it are linked to the thigh bone, which as you can see in the object list, every bone underneath it is again like structured under this thigh bone. So you could use the armatures to like give the characters funny shapes, but that is not really what we want right now because the game already does that for us. It makes, um, it has animations and we can use them. However, as you might have already realized, um, we changed this arm and copied it over to the other side, but this arm is still linked to this bone. And the other way around, this bone now isn't linked to the entire arm anymore. So how do we link those? Basically, as you can see, all those bones have a specific na name. In this case, they're mostly numbers. So if you would go into object mode and select the body and you go into this little, little green triangle thing, it's called object data properties, then you will see a list of vertex groups. Basically, they all have numbers as well. And these vertex groups are linked only by name to the bones. So changing a name of a vertex group will link it to a different bone with the same name. Vertex groups basically are lists of data for specific vertices, basically a group of vertices with uh, specific data in them. And also when they should move based on what bone. So if we go into weight paint mode in the top left here, then you will see the entire body turning blue. If I then in the vertex group list, select the vertex group with the same number as the thigh bone just now, 11, then you'll see that the entire thigh turns red. Um, and a bit yellow and green. So these colors basically indicate how strong the weight is on that specific part of the mesh on that specific bone. So red basically means one and the lighter the color gets closer to blue, uh, the less aggressive, the less intense the weight is. When the weight on a specific vertex is fully red, so a weight of one, then that means that it will move with an increment of one based on the movement of the bone. So basically a fully red weight means that it perfectly copies the movement of that bone. 
However, as you can see on the edges, it is a little less um, red. It's like turning into yellow, green. This basically means that over here, the weight is not one anymore, but it's maybe like 0 0.5, 0 0.2 as far as you go further up. You can use this to make sure that animations actually are kind of moving into it. So if you would have everything fully red, then just every vertex that's weighted one will move and everything else won't. So you might get holes in your mesh or very weird stretches. By using this uh, graduing, gradual weight painting, you can make that scratching look yet less jaggy. However, you cannot just weight something for like 0.5. A vertex should always have a weight of one to a bone. So where, for example, here, the tie may not be weighted to the tie bone fully, um, it might be weighted to the waist. And we can check that by holding shift and pressing right mouse button. And we'll get a little pop-up uh, showing the numbers, which are the vertex groups in that area. So pressing 12, for example, will show us that um, this vertex group is for the higher waist. And I am guessing that 9 will be the waist itself. And indeed it is. So as you can see, where the weighting to the tie became less aggressive, the weighting to the waist became more aggressive. Um, and for every individual vertex, the sum of all those weights of different vertex groups should always be one. So how do we fix this exactly? Because if we look at the arm right now, we can see that both arms are weighted to only one bone. While on here, the arm is not really weighted to the proper bone at all. There's multiple ways to do this, but the easiest is to just basically copy over the weights from the original body. But we, of course, don't want to copy all the ways because maybe the copying goes wrong and the animations will be jaggy. We just want this arm to be copied over. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the vertex group that is weighted wrongly. And those are 19 and 20. Those should only be on the left arm, but they are also on the right arm. Oh, and apparently 8 is also copied partly. So be sure that you check um, all vertex groups so that you don't accidentally miss one. Otherwise, your animations will become quite weird. So if we select 19, 20, and what was the last one? I forgot. <laughs> there was 19, 20, and 8. Okay, 19, 20, and 8 should be cleared on this arm right here while the shoulder arm and lower arm of the original body should be copied over here so first removing there's a few ways you could either for example use the draw to set the weight to set the weight to one and manually like remove it however there's a quicker way and it's using the gradient tool with a gradient you can basically well make a gradient in weight for example like this however a useful thing with gradients is that everything behind the point that you selected first will um, be the weight of the selected. So if we turn the weight to one, uh, zero and we would drag to the left, then everything to the right of our, um, of our little line that we are drawing will be zero while it draws a gradient over the line that we did draw. So if we just make sure that we uh, keep everything that we want removed right from what we draw and everything that we want to keep left from what we draw, then we can basically clear out all the weights over here. Then we can also do that for 19 and 20. And as you can see, they're now fully gone while still the same on the other arm. So next up is um, copying the weights from the original model for this naturally we will need the original model so i'll go into object mode real quick and import entirety of bennett again alternatively what you could do what i sometimes do when i make more complex mod of characters is make a new collection by pressing right mouse button a new collection and renaming it original model or something like that and keeping a copy or an import of the model over there so you can like use it as a reference 
Uh, so I'll just call it Uric Body and Uric Head. So in case you mess up something like the weights, you can just copy them over. So for the process of copying over the weights, we of course don't want to copy the entire model over. The easier way to do this is by selecting only the parts that we want to copy the weights from. So if we want to copy over the weights from the original body, we can basically use a function in Blender called transfer weights. Uh, we don't have to erase this because we can let that function do it. So what we'll do is we'll unhide the original body and we'll go to it and select the same vertical group in that one. So of course we want to select six, which is the shoulder that we want to copy over. And we also want to select that in the uh, modded body. And what we then can do is while in the body that you want to copy the vertices to, you can um, in the object list hold control and press orange body and it will select it. And then we can press F3 and type in transfer weight. And we get a little pop up in the bottom left. So there's a few settings that you need to take care of. First of all, vertex groups, um, the data type, you want it to be on vertex groups and you want it to create data. So it can create new weight data, which is stored in the vertex groups. You want it to be on nearest face interpolated because that usually gives the smoothest uh, transfer. Um, we'll just keep it at object transform. The ray radius, you can leave that alone. And here we can select in what way the layers are copied, um, but we'll just keep it on active layer. This is why it is important to select the proper uh, weight group in both of them. So it will select the active layer in the original body and copy it over to the destination, the active layer in the des destination body. Then we can um, change the mix mode. And of course here we want it to be on replace. Why? because if we put mix or any other mode, then it will not just erase everything that was there in the first place and replace it with what we are copying over, but it will, for example, combine them or it will add them together, which creates weights that we don't want at all. So keep it on replace. Mix factor can be one, doesn't really matter if we don't use mix and the weight should be completely fixed. So, We'll repeat this process for the upper arm. So go into original body, select the proper weight group, which is 13. And in the modded body, also select 13. And as you can see, the weights still suck. So we'll do a quick, quick weight transfer. Usually these settings will just stay the same. So you can just like um, apply it and then go over to the next after setting it once. So one left and that is 14. And we'll once again transfer the weights over. And now we have successfully copied the weights from the original body and uh, put them over the modded body. And as you can see, they now seem to actually be working fine. One last thing we gotta take care of is normalizing. Basically normalizing means that um, you make sure that the weight on every individual vertex is indeed actually one. Like I said before, if you would have like 0 0.6 on one vertex group and 0 0.7 on another, then you will get very weird, weird results with animations, which you want to avoid. So Genshin can, Genshin, Blender can pretty much do that for you simply by just pressing weights, normalize all. You can lock the active phase groups, but you don't really need to. And just put all groups so it normalizes all of them. And you don't really need to lock the active. Locking the active group will basically normalize everything, but keep the active group the same. You can also normalize um, everything except for specific groups that you choose by pressing the little lock icon and it will lock them so it won't have effect on that. So after normalizing, the animation should be fully fixed. And we can simply check that by going into the armature, pose mode, and if we now rotate this arm, you can see that that goes pretty well. The shoulder looks a bit weird, but that is because we don't, of course, copy the exact stuff from 
Genshin. And now the arm do doesn't move anymore when we rotate the other arm and it does move when we rotate the proper arm. Meaning that we successfully removed the little bandana around this arm. So now it's time to export. Um, one last thing we gotta uh, take care of is object names. Basically the name of these objects doesn't really matter when you're uh, making a model. However, it does matter um, when you start exporting because the export function uh, of Gimi uses names to determine which object should be exported and which shouldn't be. So make sure you only have one object that is Bennett body, one object that is Bennett head. And if your character that you're modding, if that isn't Bennett is for example, has a dress or an extra, make sure they're called character name and then dress. Whatever is after that doesn't matter. Just make sure the first part is exactly what it should be. Make sure you have one of each. If you miss an object or you have two of one, then you will get errors. So once we have fixed it all, we can just export to my Genshin mod folder, select the proper character folder and press export. And now we wait for Blender to load for a few seconds and we see that it wrote the indices properly. So then we can go to Bennett's folder and we can just simply select all of this or not Bennett's folder, Bennett's mod folder, my bad, and just copy the entire folder. And in your Gimme mods folder, you can paste it to see, well, did it work? So back into Genshin, we can reload all our mods. And if we now check in our character screen, we can see that Bennett's little bandana is gone and the animations work smoothly. There is no issues with the textures. There's no issues with the animations. And it is how you edit a character in a very simple fashion in Genshin. And that much wraps it up for this video. I covered stuff you should look out for when modding characters, how weighting works and why weighting is so important. In the next video, I'll cover the process of porting weapons, putting one weapon model over another, which has been requested a few times. While you wait for the next video, try making your own character mod and maybe some other mods. They are a little more complex, especially the waiting, so try to practice with that so you get more used to all of that. And as always, thanks for watching and see you next time.